I've ported TRPC to Electron. And no, I did not just spin up an HTTP server, this runs completely on the Electron internal IPC event bus. And as you can see, renaming anything in here will turn the other side red so it's working just as normal TRPC would, but without using any HTTP server. So let's take a look at how I did this, how it works and if I would recommend it. And of course we should start on server side right here. And as you can see, I am initializing a normal TRPC project using in a TRPC create, I create a procedure, I create the router for it, everything is normal so far. But then I actually create a caller factory, which is normally used to do TRPC calls on the server side for something like Next.js server side components. And as you can see, I'm basically initializing this caller factory and then I create a caller without any specific context because my TRPC app doesn't really have a specific context. And then I actually already create a function that's called register TRPC IPC listener. And it basically just goes ahead, creates an IPC handle function that listens to the TRPC event. And for every event, we basically just call this caller with a procedure name that's passed into this event and a payload for this event that is basically a JSON string. So if we just remove all of the TypeScript magic right here, then it's basically just getting the procedure name from the caller and calling it with the specific payload that we also get from this payload object right here. And of course, we're just adding these types so that TypeScript doesn't complain and everything is still fine. But how do I now tell TRPC that I don't want to send any data over HTTP, but over the IPC event bus? Well, that's where the frontend code comes in. And again, it starts off like any normal TRPC app. We create a proxy client using the type of our app router, and then we're basically passing it links so that we know what URL we should send data to. And this is basically already where all the conventions stop, because normally you define a URL like slash TRPC, but for our use case, we actually have an easier life if we just don't define a URL at all, so we just put an empty string here. And then we can actually define a custom fetch function that will basically avoid the normal HTTP fetch that TRPC will do and just execute our custom code. And of course, our custom code will just go ahead and use the electron processes instead of HTTP calls. But before we can get to that, we'll first of all need to understand what this fetch function actually does. And it gives us a path parameter, which will basically look like this. So you get your URL that you define up here, which is basically just an empty string to make life easier. Then you get slash the name of your procedure. So in our case, that could be something like a double, for example, which we defined up here. And then you get the input that you wanted to supply to it as a JSON string. And under this assumption that this is just a string that looks like this, we of course need to check that our path is actually a string. Because as you can see, it can have multiple types. But as I've never seen it be anything but a string in my testing, I will just expect it to be one. And if not, I will just throw an error. This is of course not as error tolerant as it might need to be. So there can be use cases where this might not work, but in that case, it would need to be extended. And then we basically now just go ahead and put this path into a URL using HTTP dummy in front, just so we can get all the good helpers of the URL API. And what we're doing here is basically getting the path name, so the slash procedure name in our use case, and just replacing the slash to get the normal procedure name. We are also getting the JSON input by getting the input query parameter from here, that is basically now just our JSON that we wanted to pass to TRPC. And now we can basically just pass this data directly to our Electron IPC process using window.electron.sendTRPC event. We'll get into that shortly. And then we basically just get the data and return it in a new response because the API of TRPC just expects us to return a normal HTTP response here. And in there, we'd basically just go ahead and JSON.stringify it in a format that Electron understands. So we're basically saying, okay, we're returning a result, that result has a type of data, and then we're basically just passing the data as a separate parameter so that TRPC can go ahead and return it from our queries. But of course, there's still one thing missing that we need to understand. What is this window.electron.sendTRPC event? Well, if we just go into our main.ts where I create the browser window, you will see I did define a preload script right here. And Electron recommends preload scripts for security sake so that you don't just open every node API to the front end. So we're basically having this preload script right here, which is my preload.cts file, which basically just exposes one thing to the Electron world, which is a function that will basically just send a parameter to the IPC renderer.invoke function using the TRPC event, which we saw before in our Electron backend down here. So basically anytime this function is called, which should basically only be done by the IPC client in the front end, we basically just forward all the parameters it has to the IPC event bus, over the TRPC event and then get the return value from the Electron app back into our UI. And this way we've basically just redone all of the HTTP implementation by sending everything through this little tunnel right here, which we've defined in this preload script. So if we're now just taking a look at the whole journey, we can basically see that here we've got a use effect that listens to this count changing. So this is just a normal count like you'd see it in any basic React setup. And then we're going TRPC client, which we've exported from our TRPC file in the front end. We want to call double with a query where our value is count. 
and then we want to set double to the response of that value. Let's first of all try this out. And as you can see, anytime I click this number, it basically doubles underneath because it is sent over to your PC through the IPC event bus into the Electron app. The Electron app will double it and then return it all the way back into the front end again as a doubled value, which will then be presented right here in a really short amount of time and using a really good developer experience. So would I actually recommend that you use it? Well, kind of. I do think this is a really good development experience. I really like TRPC and I don't think it would be a good idea to open up actual HTTP ports on the user's machine. One, because you don't know if that port is available and two, because it's just a lot of extra overhead yet you don't just want to put on a foreign user's machine if you can prevent it. And this does prevent it. But I do of course have to admit that there are some workarounds here. Like this throw of course can have some consequences in case your TRPC app becomes more complicated and maybe it doesn't always return a string right here. And of course, in my main.ts file where I registered this thing, you can also see that I'm doing a lot of type hacking right here, which isn't as ideal as well, but it's something that many libraries need to do to offer a good user experience anyway. So yes, I wouldn't say that it's definitely a bad idea to use this. I just would say that, as with any library, honestly, you need to be careful if there are any use cases that you have that aren't really covered by this. But I think for the majority of Electron apps that just have some simple communication between front and back end, this should be absolutely enough. And of course, you do also need to remember that I set this up in one day. So somebody who's really passionate about this and wants to set it up in their own Electron app could probably do this much better than I have. But for now, this should be plenty for you to really understand what is happening here and to at least consider doing this in your own app if you're interested in it. And if you're interested in even more stuff, this video is something that YouTube thinks would really be interesting for you. So how about you check it out? Have a good day.